John. Jay, you told us that the only changes that were made were stylistic. Is it a stylistic change to take out all references to previous terror threats in Benghazi? Well, I, I appreciate the question again, and, and I think that uh, what I was referring to was the talking points that the CIA drafted uh, and sent around. Uh, to which one change was made. And, and, and I, I accept that stylistic may not precisely describe a change of one word to another. Uh, not a change of one no, word no, 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 I'm just. These were underwent extensive changes after they were written by the CIA. Sure. These were concerns that were raised by the State Department that the White House directed the interagency process to, 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 to use in making these talking points. Well, I think the CIA again. original version included references to Al Qaeda, mm -hmm. references to Al Ansar al Islam. Uh, it, the, the CIA, the the original CIA version included extensive discussion of the previous threats of terrorist attacks in Benghazi. Those were taken out after the CIA wrote its initial draft. And then the CIA wrote another draft. Uh, at the Based on input from the State Department. Well, but here's, here's what I've been saying, Do you John. deny that? No, John, what I'm saying is, and I've answered this question several times now, but I'm happy to answer it again if you let me answer it, uh, and that is that there was an interagency process, which is always the case, because a lot of agencies have, stakes, uh, have a stake in a matter like this, the investigative agency, the CIA, the intelligence agencies, the, the State Department in this case, uh, the national security staff, uh, and everybody uh, provided information and comment, and then on Saturday morning the CIA said, you know, we're going to take a crack at it these points based on what we know. And the things that you're talking about, again, don't go, don't go to the, the fundamental issue here, which was what would, could be said uh, concretely about what we, what the intelligence community knew to be true. Not, not that some people thought it was Ansar, uh, Ansar al-Sharia, some people thought it was other al-Qaeda affiliates or other Libyan extremists. So we knew it was extremists, or we knew that, we believe we knew that extremists had participated. There was also the belief by, from the beginning, by the intelligence community in these points that there had been uh, protests out of which the attack occurred, protests in response to uh, the demonstrations that were in, in Cairo at our embassy that were in response to that uh, video. That turned out not to be the case, but it, but it's a, it, it demonstrates uh, the fluidity of the information, the, the fact that it was hard uh, and continues to be hard in investigation to uh, uh, know concretely, especially in the first days afterwards, uh, what happened. And that's why we were so careful to say, here's what we know or we believe we know. And every time we said that, uh, we fully expect this information to change as we learn more. Uh, and it did. And we, we provided it. And, and again, the whole, the whole effort here by Republicans to find some uh, hidden mystery uh, comes to nothing because the president called it an act of terror. The ambassador of the United Nations, that very Sunday that has caused Republicans so much concern, talked about the possible involvement of Al Qaeda and Ansar al Sharia. Uh, the, you know, all of this is a distraction from the key issues. A diplomatic host was a, attacked by. Uh, individuals in Libya, in Benghazi. Four Americans lost their lives. From the beginning, the president has committed all the resources of this administration, of this government, to finding out who is responsible and to bringing them to justice. He also, very clearly, uh, together with the Secretary of State, said we need to make sure that we find out what went wrong, you know, what problems there were with security that allowed this to happen, to hold people accountable and to make the necessary changes so that it doesn't happen again. And that process uh, happened, was stood up by the Secretary of State. It was a process led by uh, two of the most uh, experienced and uh, uh, widely uh, regarded uh, figures in national security in Washington, the former Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, Admiral Mullen, and Ambassador Tom Pickering, nonpartisan, serving both parties uh, for different administrations. They conducted an extensive review of this. They've said they had access to all the information they needed. They had access to all the people they needed to talk to. And they produced an unsparing report with a series of uh, very critical uh, observations and very, criti uh, and very serious recommendations, every single one of which the State Department has adopted. So that's the way the system should work. Uh, and it worked that way because 
The President and the Secretary of State insisted that it worked that way. But Jay, can we come back to what you said? You said that the only changes that were made by either the White House or the State Department were stylistic and a single word. Mm -hmm. What we see here is that the State Department uh, raised objections about the references to Ansar al-Sharia. Mm -hmm. They raised objections to the fact that the CIA had warned about terror uh, threats in Benghazi prior to the attack. Those subjects were taken out of the CIA talking points at the direction of the White House based on no, the objections. They first of all, they weren't in the direction of the White House. The State Department. The, 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 the only, the, 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 this process, as everybody's an equal player in this process, says, you know, everybody's concerns have to be, have to be uh, listened to and taken into account. But ultimately, these were intelligence community talking points that the intelligence community, led by the CIA, had, John, could I finish? You, you had a long time there, that the, uh, that the intelligence community has to sign on represents the intelligence community's view uh, of what they knew at that time about what happened. And again, this would be uh, uh, more significant if we didn't acknowledge from the beginning that extremists were likely involved, that we didn't acknowledge from the beginning that uh, it could very well have been uh, Ansar al-Sharia that was involved, or al-Qaeda itself, or, or other al-Qaeda affiliates. This is a, an effort to uh, accuse the administration of hiding something that we did not hide. In fact, we spoke publicly about it. The secretary, I mean, the ambassador to the United Nations, who was the lead administration official talking about this that weekend, spoke openly about that possibility. And every bit of information that's come out about what we know happened in Benghazi has been a result of information provided by uh, various agencies of the administration. This investigation, in fact, continues to this day, just last week. Uh, the FBI released photographs of individuals that they uh, believe might be connected to the attack on Benghazi in their effort to bring those people accountable. That's the important business that remains to be done when it comes to Benghazi. Just, just a clarification. Let me let some others. Last one. Yeah. Um, when, when, when you said what you said, did you know that this had gone through 12 versions and that there had been extensive changes made? Were you aware of that at the time? John, there is always a deliberative process. There is always input by, by agencies. What I, uh, and I knew that. And what I also knew was that the CIA on Saturday morning uh, said, uh, we're going to draft these points. They drafted those points, and those points uh, were delivered virtually unchanged, with the exception of the one change I mentioned, uh, to members of Congress and to the administration uh, for use. Can you Kristen. Jay, to, ask, to ask you, 